Colwood today to speak with artist Brandi Satterley and learn about the People of Canada portrait project that she's been working on. Many people, when they think of Canada, think of the illustrious beaver and others, tasty maple syrup. Let's see what Brandy thinks. The 2010 Olympics in Vancouver was really kind of a starting point for me with Canadiana. Up to that point, I painted landscapes and all kinds of things, but that moment really struck me. Um, I went over to Vancouver and you see all the stereotypical images of Canada. They had igloos and polar bears and mounties and, and all of that stuff. And, and I thought to myself, is that really who we are? Are, are we these, still these stereotypes? But I also love all those stereotypical things about Canada. So I started painting um, hockey masks and um, hockey themed pieces uh, based on that experience. Over the years, I, I found that I wanted to connect with that deeper meaning of Canada. So I got out and traveled across the country and met artists all over Canada. Um, so the, the experience has gone from something very stereotypical based to something more realistic and moments that I've shared with people. I think the most important piece that I've painted in the last 10 years is probably a hockey mask on the Canadian flag. It kind of started this whole snowballing of this Canadian theme. The project that I'm working on right now is called the People of Canada Portrait Project. It's a collaborative project between Canadians and myself. I had this idea to recreate uh, this Grant Wood painting called American Gothic. And I wanted to do a Canadian version of it. So I phoned up my friend and I said, take a picture of yourself and your husband in the field out in Manitoba and, and send it to me. I have this idea. It went from there. I like the whole message of being an independent artist and, and feeling free. And even though they're in front of a houseboat that says house for sale, the title of the painting is not for sale. So essentially, they're not for sale. Their minds are not for sale. Um, they're free to live life the way they want to live it. So, And to me, that really speaks of Canada, that freedom that we have to do whatever we want in life. Canadians send in a photo of themselves and perhaps a loved one or someone who's inspired them in life. Um, and then what I do is I take that photo and I create a portrait based on an interview I do with them. I haven't had very many uh, photos from Aboriginal Canadians and I would really love to receive some from um, a diverse group of people in Canada. Um, I'm also looking for photos that come from special moments, um, maybe significant times in life, um, turning points in life, you doing things that inspire you. So ideally it's, it's two people in the photo and it's the relationship between the two people that's important to me. In this case the photo was so spectacular and so uh, inspiring that I, I kept the photo as is. What I did was I added little elements that um, were inspired by the interview I did with the two kids, which is really cool. The bay blanket, the soccer ball, the Lego pirate uh, were all elements of, of things that the kids talked about in their interview. What I learned in, in traveling across Canada, um, meeting people, the stereotypes do exist for a reason. Because they are very true in many parts of the country. There are polar bears, there are moose, there are horns and skulls on people's sheds. My exploration of Canada was a way for me to connect to those stories that have always been told about Canada. And I think that Vancouver Island has its own biosphere here. Like it's. It's its own little entity and it's so separate from the rest of Canada. It's very unique. And so what I learned is that, you know, all of those things do exist and all of those stories are true, but we're just a little bit disconnected here. And, and it was a really interesting experience to, to leave here and then come back with that information. 
there's a wonderful article written by Brandy Satterley in Our Canada, Our Country. What does your Canada and your country mean to you? For Community Producers, I'm Kathleen Burton. A lot of people have told me, you know, they're very uncomfortable because you have a child basically either drowning in water or you think about the old adage, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Your Daughter is in Good Hands is the title of Shemaine's artist Shannon Peck's exhibit in Duncan. Shannon aims to relay her own adoptive story and reach others who share her experience. The work at the exhibit is a story about my adoption history and it walks people through um, my experience as an adoptee from being relinquished at birth, 10 days old, through to when I began to search for my birth mother and the feelings around that, the feelings I had around being rejected at birth, um, and coming to terms eventually 47 years later with all those feelings and um, the emotions that surround that. These uh, pieces are representative of the life cycle of a baby coming into conception. And for me, this kind of was a representation of the circumstances that unwed mothers were in. I am absolutely amazed. You know, this is really a social statement through the lens of art. Um, it educates, it inspires, um, it touches so many people's hearts. I go home emotionally just really exhausted because people walk through and mostly women who are walking through and they're crying like just tears rolling down their face and they come over and give me a big hug and they just want to share whether it's pain they have from something else but there's something in the exhibit that's triggering a really strong emotional response and people and more than I even anticipated. Shannon is so incredibly open about sharing her story and it's been just really amazing. As an artist, I, I really actually was drawn to the word incident, not just because it, it's a very strong word and you're referring to a child as an incident, but as an artist that word provides a lot of artistic fodder. I really would like people to have an understanding of what it was like for unwed mothers in the era probably from the 40s to the late 70s when they had really no choice but to relinquish their child. And as an adoptee, we often feel we you know often feel that sense of rejection because your birth mother left you at the hospital, but they had no other choice. My birth father's a total unknown. His name's not on my birth certificate. My birth mother, I um, found her identity about two years ago. I did reach out to her last fall just by registered mail. I don't want to show up at her door or call her because her family's not aware about my birth. Every step of the journey, every piece that I worked on, uh, depending what piece it was, I was thinking about my birth mother, I was thinking about her family, thinking about my adoptive family. It brought me to terms with you know, my birth identity and I was able to finally bring the two together and just be comfortable with myself. I've had a great life with a lovely family, um, but that's not the point. The point is understanding the social um, consequences that came from kind of that social experiment where they felt like women who were unwed didn't have a right to keep their children. Art can be a very powerful tool for uh, social statements and to educate and to draw out people's opinions and emotions. I'm drawn to um, focus on things that have to do with identity, whether it's my identity or someone else with um, I've done pieces on sexuality, women's rights or women's reproductive rights, but it all tends to come back around to, I think, the fact that I was adopted. Shannon's exhibit makes us reflect on this very important social issue. For Community Producers, I'm Kelsey Zwork. Getting people who are going through active addic you know, addiction issues um, to work on the same canvas with people who are, uh, care about 
care about those same people and, and uh, want to bring them into the fold of community again. That's a powerful message. It started off as a charcoal, something totally different, and then the kids painted over it, then smeared it, and then someone came along and painted a sun going this way, yeah. and started scratching on it, and then someone turned it upside down, and started using a sharpie on it, and now here's the sun's eyes and nose, and he's facing this way, and this is sort of a reflection in the water. We have this great program at Anawim. Um, anybody can come and make art with us, the, the residents, the drop-in people, the people of the public. The glasses ended up being the most prominent part of your portrait, that everything else outside of the glasses was like something that people worked with. I had just gotten those glasses. Yeah. I've done like collaborative artwork something, 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 something a lot before glasses. in my life and when the practice of being creative together can get people talking about the difficult things that they're facing in their life. It, it helps me to let go and it helps me to hold on and it also helps me to project something that I want within the future. This is Ida Love Courtney. We're here collaborating on a community picture. Check this out. It's sort of a, a medium to finding peace and inner self and tranquility and, and just forgetting everything. And if you're having a bad day, just going out there and splashing some paint on it and letting some of that aggression out. Paint and art is just a way of expressing what we're feeling inside. And sometimes we keep that bottled up and that's not always the healthiest. first got to Victoria, I ended up on, uh, on the streets and I was going through a mental health crisis and uh, uh, somebody who I met uh, brought me over here and told me I could find resources and, um, and help. So Anaheim House is a twofold. It's a drop-in program and a, a residential program. So we work with people who are living in poverty, living on the streets, and help them with day programs, um, counseling, food, showers, laundry art program, um, various other drop-in programs that they can come to throughout the day. And then the transitional house is for people who have been coming to our day program and are looking for a way to transition off of the street. Anawim is a very good outlet if you are struggling with alcohol, um, drugs, or even gambling, addiction addiction behavior as well, because you don't have to be on the use for the addiction to be alive. It was like the behavior. I had to learn how to change my behaviors. So people who are struggling with addiction, I know that's something that's in my family, and it's something that a lot of people who uh, helped me a great deal when I came out here struggle with still. And, uh, and I've known people who passed away from it. And so, I know that art can be a good way to work through some of that grief. Artistic collaboration is good, even from a mental health perspective, I think. Getting people to like share their ideas and feelings and feel like they can contribute helps to build um, a sense of confidence that can be taken into other areas of life. And one of the kids from St. Andrews did the drawing and then we transposed it and now it's turned into this. I have a YouTube page that's called Island Love Courtney. And what it is, basically, it's videos and talking to people. Now the paint art, it's a release. You know, it's the release of a emotion, whether it be good, bad, sad, or mad. I didn't know this until I picked up a paintbrush and started talking to people and also getting established to have my own place and develop those mental pictures. It's pretty magical. There's a lot of heavy stuff here and you know we all get the opportunity to come and just sort of focus on something for a little while and nothing else matters because you're just sort of, it's you and it's what's in you and you're putting it out there and um, it's, it's beautiful and healing. We always try to start off with some guidelines as to how the painting should be and what they should look like and it never is, it never goes through. It always just becomes whatever it's going to become. And I think it's beautiful because it always demonstrates what a community is. And that is all different kinds of people with different agendas, different mindsets, different personalities, different colors, different influences, different backgrounds. And they just put that all on a canvas. Sometimes you get this wonderful, uh, illustration of what humans can do when they, they put their minds together and other times it, it comes out looking like a mess and you just think, yeah, that's, that's community. Uh, and we can always paint over it and clean it up and make it something better. 
And that's one of the wonderful things about art is that it reflects that we all have the same thing inside. And that's a creative heart and a desire to, to create the sense of harmony and, and beauty. It's a positive. Because I've had, I've had a few negatives in my life, so I'm trying to balance the scale, shall we say. I feel like there's more opportunities out there and that I'm better, better prepared to respond to them. So I hope to be able to do art in a meaningful way and have, uh, uh, have the community that supported me here um, provide the inspiration for that and, uh, and hopefully find a way to, uh, to contribute back if I'm able to with, through art. I think it's a powerful medium to create change through. Hi, we're at the Robert Bateman Centre and we're celebrating the opening of One Tree. It's an exhibit that runs November 16th to January 31st. There's a hundred year old black walnut tree that was felled in the Rockland area in Victoria and artists have taken pieces of the tree and have created artwork from it. The Robert Bateman Center and the One Tree exhibit really go well together. They both have a really strong tie to nature, so it's a really good community-based exhibit where all these artists are coming together to create different things from a soul tree. So this door, I collaborated with Andreas Kunert of Ancient Art of Design. Um, this is a piece of sandstone. Uh, 50 million years ago, these fish on it were alive. So it's a, a stunning piece on, on its own. We set it into this, uh, this sliding door. The project was my, my concept. Uh, the original inspiration was a silver maple that grew near Duncan that had a really great history to it. And we uh, started adding up all the things that we'd made out of it and how many hours we'd, we'd spent building furniture out of it. And eventually we figured out that uh, it added up to a, a couple of full-time jobs for this one tree. And we thought, wow. We started doing the math and figured out if, uh, if all the trees in BC were created that many jobs, there'd be six million new jobs. And anyway, so we thought we'd, we'd celebrate that tree's history and how much we could build out of it. And uh, we did a display at the Interior Design Show in Vancouver. And one of the uh, people that worked at the Robert Bateman Center at that time saw the show and suggested we collaborate. So that, that was the, the idea. The principle of the exhibit is that we want to celebrate the, the life of a tree, so the history of it, uh, uh, getting into the species, the fact that it stands in one place for more than a century and uh, harbors uh, all kinds of animals and uh, feeds the soil and, and all of that. But also we wanted to celebrate the depth of artistic talent that we have on southern Vancouver Island and, and elsewhere. But uh, just, just the amazing woodworkers and, and also painters and other artists that we have in the area. And then the third thing was uh, just to show the economic activity that can be created out of one tree. So in this case, <coughs> the tree may have become firewood. Um, but instead, you know, we've, uh, we've got the arborists, the, the uh, sawyers, the tree haulers, and uh, our, our millers and dryers, and then we have uh, 52 different artists all uh, making something out of this tree. Um, probably all told, it'll be over $300,000 worth of activity just out of this one tree. Not to mention now there's going to be hundreds or thousands, thousands of people that come and, and view the pieces here. It'll generate some, uh, a little bit of traffic for Victoria as well. It's exciting being a part because everybody does something different. And it's so amazing to see the, the ideas that people come up with. It's such an exciting thing and this venue is absolutely amazing and it meshes in with the Robert Bateman uh, statement about nature and love of wood and so I think this one tree has been a phenomenal addition to our community. Out of one tree it's amazing that you could get this many pieces. Probably would have been firewood if John hadn't come along and saved the tree. For, for people like myself we appreciate it that he allowed the opportunity for all of us to be creative 
in different ways that turned into such a beautiful exhibit of different creativity. It started with a camping trip last year in the spring of 2016 when my wife and I went across Canada in a VW bus and uh, the first, very first morning there were bird songs. Uh, we woke up to bird song and, and uh, I thought well I should write these down and, and I wrote across the country I wrote more than a dozen down and, and I thought well that, that sounds like an album maybe. So, uh, so I had enough material to start writing, composing for an album. And, this January, I was playing at Herman's and parked in the basement, and I whistled a couple of notes, and I was just amazed uh, by the sound in the, in the bottom of the View Street Parkade. I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could get a piano down here and record? So I phoned up Tom Lee and they were kind enough to say, oh sure, you can have a Steinway for the night. And, uh, and I phoned up the city parking manager, Ismo Husu, and uh, he was very, very accommodating. So uh, it, it all worked out very well. So the piano was placed right behind me and a tuner came along for an hour on the Sunday night. And then uh, I had uh, Dave Malashev come and film the session for a couple of hours. So there are three tunes that I'm going to be posting on YouTube and uh, so I, sp I played till five in the morning and it was quite, a, quite an experience, a recording experience like none I've ever had. <laughs> So the motifs are quite simple to start with, although some of them are a little more a little more complex, and uh, and so all the songs are based on and start with bird songs. There are a number of things that could have gone wrong. There could have been too much noise. There could have been people disrupting. Too much traffic, even. But it was a quiet Sunday night, and and as soon as I started playing, I thought, "Wow, the sound in here really is amazing. It really is." And so it, it went very, very well, other than the odd disruption. And and if you listen really closely on the CD, you will hear seagulls, seagulls screaming in the distance. scored for film and TV uh, in my lifetime. I'm not doing much of that now. I'm doing more CD production and, and uh, playing because I love to play. There's something about walking in nature that brings peace and tranquility and adventure and excitement. I'm speaking with Joanne Thompson, a landscape painter, about her paintings and how she brings that out in her paintings. Two years ago, I convinced the CRD to let me do an artist in residence at Francis King, and that I think really spurred my interest in the conservation of local areas and seeing the need to be active in putting my energy forward to preserve local wild spaces. The show is about wild anticipation. So I get to spend a lot of time in beautiful wild places because people anticipated the need to protect them. So as an artist, I get to go out there and in this show is featured quite a few of the places from the Capital Regional District, as well as some places further afield. So I've got Grasslands National Park and Ivivik National Park, and a new conservation area on Main Island called St. John's Point. We were really 
fortunate to go to Maine Island and working on St. John Point uh, conservation which has happened. We went as artists to raise awareness and then um, put our works uh, towards an auction and a fundraiser. And so it's part of that process of um, conserving. Joanne's whole exhibit, Wild Anticipation, is about celebrating these special places and the foresight of people in our community to make sure that they remain for future generations. And I think that's so important. Natural places aren't only something that's a home for animals, it's also something that gives us well-being as a community, and it's something that protects our natural heritage as people. What is it that you love about Joanne's art? The sense of um, reverence for nature. She brings you in close with you know, a bark piece, something like so intimate and really makes you look because she's really in there looking. And then into the landscapes, makes you realize how important wide open natural spaces are to us. Okay, the Matson Conservation Area, I don't, I don't pick wildflowers in the woods. The Mason Jar series started as a family history project and I had, um, transcribed a number of my grandmother's stories and she talked about having 300 mason jars on the go at all times and I was trying to find a way to tell the story I just couldn't figure it out and finally I just got frustrated and put things in put some things in a mason jar and painted it and I figured I'd just do that until I figured out how to tell the story and that was how to tell the story. I really love Joanne's paintings because they're something we can celebrate that's local and it features real places in nature that are protected that people right here in Victoria and South Vancouver Island can enjoy. The watercolor on canvas is very delicate. I have to do it in studio. I can sketch outside. I'll often sit very quietly doing a drawing and the forest critters will come up and have a look at me and maybe squ squirrels like to scold me. Like, I'm not supposed to be there. Like, what are you doing here? This is my spot. And ravens and um, flickers will come by and it's quite wonderful. I love being in the landscape and I know a lot of people who do and who want to bring that landscape into their homes. So I've found that people buy the landscapes Sometimes it's when they can no longer get out there anymore. They haven't got the mobility to get out, but they can then sit and remember being there. And it brings that peace that we get when we're sitting in the land. Joanne's artwork captures the breathtaking landscapes of Canada. For Community Producers, MJ Kellington.